Hi, today we're in the uh, countryside neighborhood, one of the most popular in Westfield, Indiana. We're in front of 320 Plainville Drive, a uh, crazy name for a uh, property that's in a very pretty area. Hi, it's Bob with Top Choice Real Estate, bringing the word on the street, talking Indiana real estate. Hey, if you stick around to the end, uh, we're gonna do uh, a little tour of the all the crazy good amenities in Westfield, Indiana. It's just crazy how much it has to offer. And uh, then we'll give you a current market update so that you can take advantage of all the latest trends just as they're happening. And then I'll tell you about just how crazy it was last weekend in this market. Hey, let's go inside and see what we've got. Okay, we are inside. We've got a nice wide uh, open entryway highlighting the uh, stairway to the second story. But right inside the door is an office. It's got French doors on it, which are really nice. You can close them at the end of the day or to keep guests or kids out if you'd like. Um, it's a good side office. Nice big window. Lots of natural light. You gotta love these hardwood floors. There's actually a gleam to them. Okay, Let's get into the rest of the house here. Uh, moving down the hallway. Um, you've got a formal dining room. It is somewhat open to the main living space. Nice gas log fireplace. This room is uh, good size. It can accommodate uh, probably all the furniture that you need. It's open to the kitchen. It's got uh, good natural light, nice view out the back. There's room here for uh, family dining for a table, uh, maybe a six top or so. And the kitchen is uh, pretty well put together. You've got the taller cabinets, you've got stainless steel appliances. Oh, uh, yeah, I didn't think they'd be soft clothes. The island bar does have uh, an overhang on it for stools. Your, uh, Got a small pantry here, and you're convenient right here to your dining room. Okay, I think you're gonna like this backyard. Okay, you've got a wooden deck, and then you've got a uh, paver patio, so you have room for a fire pit. You're fenced on both sides, so and the neighbors do have fence across the back, so you could, could uh, fence the back end if you would like, um, keep the dogs and the kids in. But uh, you also have a nice berm back here that uh, shields you somewhat from the neighbors and uh, from traffic. It's a long way back there to those next houses, so you don't have to worry about uh, conversations with people that you're not had enough coffee yet to uh, have conversations with. Okay, let's go back inside, check it out. Like we probably got a coat closet right here. Yep. And right here we have a uh, powder room. And then we have the laundry area. And we've got a deep garage. And it's a three car garage and it's finished. So cool. Now let's go upstairs. Got carpeted stairs, they're wide, which is nice, so they're quiet, plus you got some elbow room. The window lets in a lot of light. Now this is kind of interesting, as you come up to the second story, you're not quite there, but over the garage you have this huge loft space. Or bedroom space, however you'd like to use it. The vaulted ceiling makes it even larger, but you do have a closet. So this would be a bedroom if you wanted it to be. Really good size. Okay. Interesting floor plan up here. You've got one bedroom to your right here. Not real big, but you do have lots of them. Got a hall linen closet. Another front bedroom, good sized windows, pretty decent sized room. 
Across the hall from it is another bedroom. This one faced the back of the house. Closet there. And then you've got a Jack and Jill situation. So it, the door comes off of this bedroom and then it goes to the hallway so that the other two bedrooms could use it. There is um, double vanity and you have tub and shower, a one piece fiberglass unit. So that works pretty nicely. Okay, then we're into the master. It does have the vaulted ceiling. Pretty good size, easily accommodate a king along with a couple um, chest of drawers, nightstands, and a wing chair. Um, you've got, people always ask me, what do you use those shelves up there for? And uh, the things that I've seen are probably the best are like pottery, um, big plants. I don't know, I've seen stuffed animals up there. Um, hey, be creative. Private master bath, double vanity. Private uh, commode room. You've got the soaker tub with a lot of light coming in from that window. You've got a separate shower. And then you have the master bedroom closet. So, a lot here. Nice uh, master bedroom ensuite to go along with three or four other bedrooms. I mean, this loft is uh, crazy big, and I guess you put all the kids in here if you want. <laughs> okay, let's go check out the basement. Okay, we've got a 720 square foot unfinished basement, so you could do what you want with it, finish it how you want. It does have rough in plumbing, so you put a bath down here. You've got room up there if you wanted to box in some storage. But this is a uh, good sized room. You got your mechanicals all bunched together over there. Sump pump, ejector pump, water heater and furnace, water softener. But hey, this has got a nice tall ceiling to it, which really makes a difference on the bedroom, or I mean on a basement. Uh, this looks to be about nine feet, and most of it is clear span. So you really could uh, develop this into game room, theater room, family room, fitness room. Hey, lots of options. Okay, a lot of nice features on this uh, classic two-story. We're looking at almost 2,700 square feet over a 700 square foot unfinished basement. It's got that super loft, and the ticket on this one is 470. If you'd like a personal tour, just uh, give me a quick call or text. So if you're considering moving here, you're gonna wanna pick up our relocation guide. It's free and there's no obligation. My staff and I have prepared the ultimate relocation guide, and you can get your copy below. Okay, while we're in the neighborhood, we're gonna take a look at the uh, cheapest and most expensive sales from the past year. I'm standing in front of 521 Graybill uh, Drive. It's a two bedroom, two bath, 1180 square feet. It's got a great room with a vaulted ceiling, new granite countertops and stainless steel appliances in the updated kitchen. You got a fully fenced in backyard that overlooks the pond. And uh, hey, even a new roof in 2020. Uh, this one was built in 2001 and sold in just two days for $250,000. Hey there, over the years I've worn lots of hats in the real estate industry. So today I'm gonna to share in this video what they were, what I've done, and most importantly, how that can benefit you. Hey, I bought my first house while I was still in college. So yes, I've been a first time home buyer. And if you are a first time home buyer, I know what that feels like and I've made systems that help so that you come to learn what is going to happen next so that it takes some of that anxiety out of the whole transaction and makes it a lot more enjoyable experience. Hey, six months later, I bought my first duplex and fixed it up. What a learning curve that was. I can remember we were in the kitchen and we were uh, hooking up the gas range. It's the first time I'd ever done this, okay? And all of a sudden we had flames and my buddy grabs a bucket of really nasty water that we'd use to clean the floor and he throws 
it over on me and oh god now hey these years later i i ran the uh, gas lines for my entire house and for my barn put in the furnace water heaters everything okay so i learned something new every day and i still do that work led to being a contractor you know we were those guys that had uh, the sign on their truck you know like no job too big or too small the biggest job we ever did was we uh, rehabbed a 42 unit apartment project i mean we didn't take it to the studs but it was pretty darn close the most interesting job we ever did was we lifted a house up off the foundation tore out the basement walls then relayed all the basement walls and set the house back down on the foundation hey because of that kind of experience i can walk through a house with you and i can point out opportunities and i can answer your questions about can we open up this wall or can we whatever the case might be hey and when it's all said and done i know a guy that can do all those things that you might want done and you know what they do good work they're reliable and they're affordable the next hat I wore was property manager. It had something like 500 tenants I was responsible for. And so today I'm an affiliate, or my company is an affiliate of the Key Renter Indianapolis North franchise. And so we can help you with all of your property management needs if you're wanting to buy a house for an investment purpose. This led to me being a builder of single family homes, apartments, condominiums. So when it comes to new construction, it wouldn't be my first rodeo which means to you, I can be a difference maker for your benefit. Too many people have bad experiences with builders. I can put my experience to work for you, facilitating successful outcomes with new construction homes. It was kind of a natural outgrowth from builder to developer, and I oversaw the engineering and the state highway cuts and putting down new streets and sewer lines and water lines, building in all kinds of weather, all kinds of building sites. Remember one down in Brown County, we were literally hanging off the hillside, uh, putting up uh, siding in about 40 uh, mile an hour winds. Wasn't a lot of fun, but we got it done. Hey, I've also done planning and zoning work is my development process, and I do that for clients now. And that's something that can come in real handy when people are buying ground or want to build their own house on their own piece of ground. I did a little work way back in the day as a home inspector, which means to you I can drill down into the reports and I can work for the best outcome for you under the circumstances. For several years, I was an appraiser, conventional FHA, VA. Again, I know the drill. I know how to read the report and I know what can be done about it, which means to you have a greater likelihood of the deal closing. For 17 years, I was a mortgage lender. In fact, I grew a mortgage broker to become the second largest mortgage broker in the state that year. I know the ropes and can at times make you aware of opportunities that will literally make dreams possible in your specific situation. As a mortgage lender, one of my specialties was construction lending, including rehab financing. I can help turn a house with good bones into the home you want before you even move into it. Or I can help you to build your dream home on your own piece of ground. About 15 years ago, I worked as a commercial real estate due diligence inspector across the United States and Canada for the great uh, large Wall Street banks and investment firms. I worked all the way from Calgary to Charleston and from Toronto to Biloxi. Um, I did about 500 properties a year and this was everything from multifamily apartment projects to factories huge distribution centers, grocery stores, restaurants, hospitals, doctor's offices, retirement homes, high-rise office buildings. Hey, I got those assignments because I could walk into any market in the entire continent and come up with recommendations for these large investment firms uh, so that they could get the best value out of their properties. So, hey, if they trusted me to do that, I hope you will trust me with your situation too. Throughout my entire career, just about, I've been a licensed realtor, both here and in, and in Colorado. And I've worn a lot of hats. In fact, it's hard to find a realtor who has the depth of experience that I do. All in all, I've played a role in something like 5,000 successful transactions, which means to you, you have a high likelihood you will achieve success. So before you sign on with your brother-in-law's third cousin because she's family, Consider if you really want to put the 
uh, largest financial transaction of your life in the hands of, well, your brother-in-law's third cousin who just got their license. Bottom line, there are good reasons why 50% of my business is repeat business and another 25% is referral. My clients tell me I work harder to make good things happen. Make it a great day now. Okay, we've moved along to the opposite end of the spectrum and we're standing in front of uh, 16314 Oldenburg Circle. This is the most expensive sale in Countryside in the past year. This is a four bedroom, three and a half bath. It comes with uh, 2,405 square feet over an 1,140 square foot finished basement. Uh, this one was built in 2005. It's got a lot of curb appeal. You got a four bedroom home with an in-ground pool fully fenced in private backyard that sits on the pond. Um, you've got a private office with glass doors, welcomes you once off the uh, front porch there into the entryway. You've got an open concept family room with uh, added built-ins and a gas fireplace. Updated gourmet eating kitchen with stainless steel appliances and a breakfast bar for additional seating. Uh, formal dining room and main floor laundry with mudroom uh, boot bench. All the bedrooms upstairs, including the owner suites with uh, vaulted ceilings, custom closet, double sinks, tile shower, and whirlpool tub. The finished lower level features a full bathroom, wet bar, and entertainment area with custom built-ins. Add the three-car garage and the outdoor kitchen with a gas grill and fridge. Wow. You can see why this one sold in just three days for 575,000. This neighborhood, it's pretty hot. And speaking of hot, uh, Zillow just named Indianapolis the fourth hottest housing market in the country. Now, good houses can sell fast. So if you're interested in uh, any of the houses we've looked at today or anything that you've seen uh, with a for sale sign in front of it or an ad, just give me a quick call or text. I'll take good care of you. Okay, I'm in front of the uh, main amenity package for the countryside neighborhood, and this is really a deluxe package. Check this out. Just starting over on this side, we have uh, oh four or yeah four bask or two basketball courts or four half courts. You've got uh, playground equipment here. Back behind it is uh, a couple tennis courts. And if we come over here, you've got a sand volleyball court. More playground back there. You've got a big pool where they have a swim team during the summertime. And then back behind it, you have this nice lake, which creates a real pleasant, serene setting. And you've got walking trails that wind around this. You can see they've got a big parking lot so that a lot of people do and can use this. You've got the clubhouse. Looks like they take care of stuff around here. And then out here in this field alongside the lake, you've got a uh, soccer field. And that is a couple big pools. Stretches all the way over to this side of the clubhouse. So, uh, nice package. Come enjoy. Okay, if you're undecided about whether you need to buy or sell first, this is not my first rodeo. I'll be glad to talk and share the pros and cons of going one direction or the other, and then you can be the judge for your own self about what works best for your own personal situation. By the way, we offer a free room-by-room -room analysis. There's no cost and there's no obligation. And I guarantee you, that I can help make you money and I can help save you money. My staff and I prepared a short video film about this. It highlights 13 key points that you'll wanna pay attention to because they'll help you sell your home for more money. Plus, I'll share secrets on how I sold my last five homes in a grand total of less than 30 days. The city of Westfield has a lot to offer. Many amenities, not only in its own boundaries, but also in the surrounding area. Westfield is the northernmost suburb of Indianapolis. It sits at the top of Hamilton County, which is the wealthiest county in the state. Highway 31 runs right down the center of it. That's probably the, about the busiest highway in the state other than the interstates. It's about 10 minutes down to Carmel, about the same to 465, which is the beltway that runs around the uh, city of Indianapolis and will take you anywhere you wanna go in the metro area. It's about 20 miles to the downtown circle. 
that's a, a, probably about a 45 minute drive. Not that you're probably gonna have a whole lot of need to go all the way downtown unless you're going to a Colts game or a Pacers game or out to eat someplace or something like that. Now State Road 32 runs east and west, kind of cuts through the middle of the city because the city itself is about a seven by seven mile square and you have roads running about every mile north and south and east and west. But 31 and 32 are your key travel routes. Now let's talk jobs. Westfield is largely a bedroom community. Most people work outside of Westfield, either in Carmel or down along the Beltway. But there are some jobs in the schools, in the, a limited number in manufacturing, and then just in your basic services. Okay, let's talk schools. There's six elementary schools, an intermediate, and a middle school, and a high school. Neat thing about the high school, it's got an enrollment of 2,400, which is considerably smaller than most of its neighbors. And some people just might like that a great deal. Now the system is rated A plus by niche.com. It is ranked number six out of 290 public school systems in the state. That puts it in the top 2%, which is just crazy good. It is also home to Garin Catholic High School with an enrollment of about 800 students. And it is ranked in the top 5% of all Catholic high schools in the United States year in and year out. So you have two great options for where to send your kids to school. Moving on, let's talk uh, hospitals and medical care. There's a Riverview Hospital basically at the junction of uh, highways 31 and 32. There are many exceptional hospitals located about 15 minutes south in Carmel. These are right on 31. They are, uh, include the IU Health System, uh, Ascension St. Vincent, and the uh, Riley's Children Hospital. Surrounding those are many specialty hospitals like Heart Hospital, Oncology, Women's Hospital, um, Cardiovascular, and there are many, many ancillary medical buildings surrounding these hospitals. There are tons of healthcare opportunities to satisfy all your needs about 15 minutes south of the main part of Westfield. There is a lot to do in Westfield. The city and the organizations have put together a full schedule of events. And I'm gonna take you on a tour of a few of the major ones a little bit later in this video. And any discussion of Westfield has to begin with Grand Park. Stay tuned to get the full scoop, but there's more to Westfield. Looking at Parks and Rec, there's 12 parks with playgrounds, splash pads, disc golf, a skate park, picnic tables, shelters, gazebos, and 94 miles of trails, even an equestrian trail. Now, when it comes to golf, there's only one public course. So you either have to join a country club or go to nearby Carmel or Noblesville, which has many good options for golf. Music lovers have it better off. Cool Creek Park offers six concerts during the summer, and there's the new Jam at the Junction, which has a concert every Friday night during the summer. Connor Prairie is not too far off. It seats 8,000 people and has 12 concerts during the summer, which are very well attended, and everybody has a good time. We're gonna visit there and we're also gonna stick our head in the door at Ruoff Music Center. Now Ruoff is not in Westfield, but it is uh, maybe about 30 minute drive away. And uh, it is the gem when it comes to music in the state of Indiana. In 2018, it sold more tickets than any other music venue in the entire world. And year in and year out, it is in the top five of ticket sales worldwide. So be sure to stay tuned to see what's going on there. Okay, when it comes to shopping, along State Road 32 to the east are strip centers. To the west, you've got uh, the development of big box stores. And if you go south, right on the border with Carmel, you've got Greyhound Pass. And there are a lot of big box stores, not to mention a lot of other stores. And then right across the street in Carmel, is the Clay Terrace, which is an open air mall with even more stores. So there is plenty of shopping opportunity for people that live in Westfield. Okay, let's talk restaurants. Park Street has a number that come very highly recommended. My favorite is the Italian house. You're gonna need to get a reservation probably about two weeks in advance. It's that good. Now there are a number of uh, brew pubs and wine bistros that get quite a bit of attention. But my other fave is Grindstone on the Monon. Be sure to get the pickle brine chicken sandwich. Sounds kind of odd, but it's really pretty darn good. Now, if you'd like to learn everything there is to know about Westfield, Indiana, or to walk through a home you've seen advertised, just text me or book a call. Okay, let's jump in the ride and go take a look at these world famous attractions. Let's talk the Grand Park Sports Complex in Westfield, Indiana. 
Evidently, the city fathers had seen the movie Field of Dreams starring Kevin Costner, where he said, if we build it, they will come. Actually, he didn't quite say that, but I'm gonna paraphrase it since that's how it's usually paraphrased anyways. If we build it, they will come. So in 2007, the City Fathers came up with this idea and envisioned Grand Park. Seven years later in 2014, Grand Park opened and it continues to grow. There are 400 plus acres. There are 31 sports fields, 26 ball diamonds. There are three super large indoor facilities and that's just for starters. You put that all together and it makes for one of the 10 largest sports complexes in the country. Let me repeat that, one of the 10 largest sports complexes in the country. It is the home of the NFL's Indianapolis Colts training camp and it's a host of untold number of youth and adult sports competitions. Not to mention leagues and camps and it draws athletes and their families from all over the country. It attracts somewhere between one and two million people to the complex and to the city of Westfield. That brings in millions of dollars to the local economy and it makes Westfield a very busy place, especially during the summer months. The Grand Park Sports Complex is truly a Grand Park. Check out these music and entertainment options. You won't believe all the shows you can take in. Okay, our music tour continues. We're at Connor Prairie, which is a large regional uh, tourist attraction. It is open year-round. They have a variety of activities, uh, including hot air balloons and, uh, oh, the, what is this, 150 uh, or 200, 200 year old uh, working farm. There's a lot that goes on here. Uh, unfortunately, it's February and we're not going to get to see a whole lot of it. But so in the summertime, they have what's called Symphony on the Prairie. And the Indianapolis Symphony Orchestra puts on uh, 12 concerts throughout the summertime. And all that area back there seats 8,500 people. Um, in 2023, they featured the music of Harry Potter, uh, the Star Spangled Fourth of July. They had tributes to uh, Marshall Tucker, the Fab Four, uh, Journey, Billy Joel, Elton John. Uh, uh, they did a, a Raiders of the Lost Ark um, theme. They just have a lot of fun. And when you come out here, what you do is you uh, you bring your blanket and your maybe your lawn chairs and a picnic basket with uh, dinner or you know some snacks to eat on and your favorite uh, beverage. And hey, it's a good time, it really is. I know people that have like tickets for the whole season, all 12 nights. I usually make it out once, maybe twice at the most, but uh, hey, I have a busy summer, so. But hey, it is a good time. Okay, let's uh, finish our music tour with uh, the cream de la cream, uh, let's go look at Ruoff Music Center. This is Ruoff Music Center. Now, it's February and things are buttoned up really tight. Uh, they'll probably throw me out if they see me back here, but at any rate, I'll flash you some photos. You've got to, you've got to think about this. This seats 25,000 people and uh, they have a complete lineup during the summer of all genres of music, all-star lineup. You can get a season pass even and uh, ticket sales for this are just out of this world. In fact, in 2018, Ruoff sold more tickets than any other outdoor music venue in the entire world. And year in and year out, they're in the top five. I mean, just crazy. Now, if you get the uh, Premier or the Legends Pass, uh, parking passes, you can pull right up to the turnstiles, you can tailgate, you can walk right in, and then uh, at the end of the night, you don't have to sneak out early, you can stay till the very end, you catch the encore, you walk out, it's five minutes to get out of the parking lot, and you're another, what, two, three, five minutes home? Hey, it's a great time. Coming up is my latest monthly market update with actionable data to fuel your real estate success. Housing numbers are in for the month of March 2024. So what do we have for Hamilton County and the greater central Indiana area? Both uh, closed sales and listings picked up speed coming off the winter months, but closings were down 15% and listings down 8% in Hamilton County from a year ago. This was less true throughout central Indiana as a whole, but regardless, inventory is still tight. Good houses that are priced right are now selling within about a seven to 10 day range. 
but the overall average is like five to six weeks, which means it sure helps if your house is in good condition in a good location and priced right. The median price in central Indiana is now 293,000. And in Hamilton County, that number is 426. And final price is settled at just like one to 2% less than asking price. Hey, so what does that all mean for you? Number one, prices are holding steady. Number two, lenders are reporting that more buyers have come in for pre-qualifications than they have for many months. Number three, my phone tells me that things are changing. It's been blowing up the last 10 days. And number four, we had a new listing last weekend. They had 19 lookers the first weekend and eight offers over list. Hey, the market is back in full swing. If I can be a service, be sure to give me a quick call or text. Make it a great day now. Hey, if you'd like to know everything there is to know about moving to or living in the greater Indianapolis area, then be sure to tune in every Tuesday as we do a tour of new construction homes for sale. Then on Thursday, we walk through existing homes for sale. And then on the weekend, we take a look at what it's like to actually live in Indiana. Now keep in mind, whether you're buying or selling, I work harder to make good things happen. Make it a great day now. If you found this helpful, you'll love this next video. Watch this one right now.